Hi all, welcome to the Tech Grant. Today we are going to talk about topological sorting as part of our series on graph. So let's jump into the index and see what all we are going to learn as part of this particular video. First thing that we will learn is an introduction to topological sorting like all the previous video on DFS, BFS. If you are familiar with it and only want to look into the code then you can jump ahead in the video and look for the code where I am going to explain the code for topological sorting. Next thing is I will explain the algorithm how topological sort works and how you can implement it using DFS. Then we will talk about the uses of topological sorting and finally the code for topological sort. So let's jump into the introduction. So this is an algorithm which is uh, used to order your vertex in a linear fashion so it uh, you will be able to relate it more if you have used a build tool like again maven or gradle so in case you want to arrange something or for example if you are in a college and you want to choose some major subject and a minor subject but each subject has a dependency like uh, to complete a subject a you need to complete few other subject so you need to order your all the subjects in a linear order so that you can complete that particular course. Uh, it will be more clear if I take an example and I'll take it going down the video. So the runtime complexity of this algorithm is again O of V plus E space is O of V. And this algorithm or ordering of uh, ordering of all the vertex in linear order is not possible if your graph is not a DAG. So if there is a cycle or it is an undirected graph in that particular scenario ordering is not possible and it is based on dfs so these are pretty straightforward and simple things related to topological sorting so let me explain how it works so suppose you have a graph and uh, i'll take the same example of your course for example you want to do a major in some course say course x but to come to reach this x so suppose this is a very tough course so you need to build the basic of this course so say this is some advanced algebra so you before learning advanced algebra maybe you want to learn linear algebra so i'll say this as l and before learning linear algebra maybe you need to learn some this is l and some simple maths now the second thing is uh, to learn advanced algebra maybe you need to learn another topic which is maybe calculus and to learn calculus you need some other subject uh, to learn calculus i forgot what you need but say some other subject uh, maybe z so you need to complete this z su subject and before starting anything uh, you need to have a concept of simple mathematics so you have a graph something like this so it is a directed graph there is no cycle so to understand whether you will be able to complete this course x or not we need to arrange it in a topological way so it is pretty much uh, there in a topological order so uh, let me draw it in a fresh way i'll draw it more clear here so we have a graph something like this so we have s then we have l here we have x here there is a z there is c and again there is x so let me erase the old part uh, this is not required for now okay so now we want to know whether we will be able to reach this point or not or if i start from simple mathematics will i be able to complete the complex algebra or not or advanced algebra or not so what i need to see is i need uh, to arrange it in a topological way so in when i say we need to arrange it in a topological way what it means that if suppose there is a graph which is defined as g of u comma v which says that uh, there is a connection from u to v so in a topological order u will always come 
before the vertex v so in this case i can say that this is my vertex u this is my vertex v so when i arrange it in a topological way or if i arrange the whole graph in a topological way all the u should come before v so it cannot happen that uh, x will come before s in this in this graph so that will not be a topological order or z will come before s that will again not be a topological order so to understand it little clearly what we can think of it or how we can assume it is that uh, suppose we have a graph uh, which which is given to us like this scenario so you need to start with the vertex which does not have any incoming edge so in this scenario it will be the s vertex so first we will take vertex s and then we will look for the adjacent vertex so in this case we have l and z so once we we know the vertex where we have uh, no incoming edges so we'll add it somewhere we'll add it in a stack or we'll move forward from that vertex after ignoring that vertex so next part we will consider only this much of graph so you, till here you can think that s is already processed or it has already been ordered now next we need to look for in this particular graph we need to look for another vertex which has uh, no incoming edge so in this case we have two vertex this one and this one both does not have incoming edges so we can pick any one of them so let's say we picked l so next in our data we can say that we have a vertex l here and then we'll do the same thing we'll ignore l vertex and all the edges that that is going out of l now again we'll repeat the same thing so we have uh, to pick up another vertex uh, where we don't have any incoming edge so currently it's only z, z where we don't have any incoming edge so we'll add it again here so we'll say we have z and we'll remove z from our graph and we'll repeat the same process so now we have only c left which does not have any incoming edges so i will add c here and finally once we remove c from our graph so what is left is just x so i will add x here okay and i'll remove x so this is an order which has been formed and if we reconstruct the graph or just for the sake of clarity let me reconstruct the graph that was there so we had s we had l we had z we had c and we had x and l was connected to x so if we see this particular order and the definition that i gave initially that graph g of u comma v so to have uh, all the vertex ordered in a topological way always u should uh, if u and v are vertex so u should come before v so if we see this here all the vertex that are there so l it is coming before z c and x all those l and z are at the same level so this can be interchangeable so that is fine but l is always coming before c and before x z is coming before c and before x c is coming before x and s is also coming before l z c and x so this graph we can say that this particular ordering so this is the topological order of the given graph this one so how we can implement it is like we can like i told you that it is based on dfs so we can start from vertex s and then go to the adjacent adjacent vertex then again go to l and or one of them z then go to the other vertex and as and when we go when we reach the end we can keep on adding this particular vertex in the stack so in topological order if i would have added it in the stack so and when we are doing dfs so if you rem if you remember the dfx lecture from the previous video or the one before that so you remember in stack this will be always in the end so this will be x then c then z then l and finally s will be there so we can basically pop these in the order and that will give us the topological order and it will be very very clear when we 
code so let's go to the code once and uh, uh, sorry before going to the code let's look at the uses of topological sort so uses is to find a shortest path in DAG so this algorithm will be very very helpful if you have a DAG and you want to find a shortest path especially in the case where you are given a situation like uh, a dependency and you need to find uh, minimum time or uh, minimum time to complete something like for example if this course is there this course example if i give a, an edge weight that uh, to complete uh, your uh, simple mathematics it takes eight days and to complete this linear algebra it takes 10 days and this takes like uh, uh, this that was some random subject so it takes like five days and calculus it takes like 15 days and we need to find how what will be the minimum time to complete this complex algebra so we can take one of these paths and we can go ahead and complete so this algorithm will be helpful in that particular uh, scenarios so this is one example shortest path in DAG second is finding dependency of graph in uh, to, uh, build to like maven this I already explained in the starting of the video then it is also helpful in finding Hamiltonian path so it, you don't find the Hamiltonian path basically with this but you can tell whether the Hamiltonian path exists or not in a linear time so this is like a NP complete problem but you can tell whether a Hamiltonian path exists or not in a O of V plus E which will be linear time complexity using topological sort and we'll learn about Hamiltonian path further down the series of graph so this is it for the theory part now let's jump into the code and I will explain you uh, the detail of how we can implement and the implementation is very very simple it is completely based on DFS so let's jump into the code let us take a graph like this so we have 10 vertex here one is uh, connected to 2 3 and 4 2 is connected to 5 and 6 5 and 6 are connected to 7 7 is connected to 10 and similarly 3 is connected to 8 8 to 10 4 to 9 and 9 to 10 now we need to decide what is the topological order or topological sorted uh, way for this particular graph so you can think of this like expanded to course like this course 10 to complete course 10 you need to complete course 7 to complete course 7 you need to complete course 5 and 6 to complete course 5 or 6 you need to complete 2 because both 5 and 6 are dependent on course 2 to complete course 2 you need to co complete course 1 like that you can think of it so what we uh, learned in the previous section in the PPT of the theory that we need to pick up the first vertex which does not have any incoming edges and start from there so we'll use like I promised like we'll use DFS for that so the code is particularly based on DFS uh, let me just expand it like this a bit so here if you see in the topological code uh, topological sort class the code is pretty simple and straightforward we have a DFS method so we get root vertex as input so in our case so this is the representation of each of the vertex and the adjacency list we can go and look at the definition of vertex so it's the same one which we have used in the previous example of BFS so there is a name visited and adjacency list uh, field in vertex class so what we are doing here is uh, we are creating a graph like this so we have v1 connected to v2 v1 connected to v3 v1 connected to v4 like how we have represented here so the starting point uh, when we call this particular function topological sort is v1 so in this case we have decided that okay v1 is not there uh, v1 does not have any incoming edges so we'll start from there if nothing is given then you basically traverse all the vertices and check whether there is an incoming edge to that or not to check incoming edge you can see that whether it is present in the adjacency list of any other uh, vertex or not so you can use a data structure something like map to find that so that you don't have to, uh, you can do it in order one complexity so but to keep things simple here uh, i will assume that the node the starting node is given to us so the root vertex is given to us which is v1 so what we are going to do is <clears throat> we are going to first set the value of v1 to true which means that uh, the vertex has already been visited 
and then we'll go to the adjacent vertex so when we go to the adjacent vertex we'll see whether it is already visited or not if it is not visited then we'll do a dfs now once we are done with the dfs so in this example so when we start from one suppose we go to two then from two we'll do again dfs we might go to five or six let's say we went to five uh, let me drag it a bit so say we went from two to five uh, as part of the dfs and finally from five to seven and seven to ten so once we are done with ten then we'll come out of this for loop and at that point we will push the root vertex to uh, to one of our stack so the stack is a global stack so the vertex that will be pushed at in the global stack in the very first order will be vertex 10 now from here when we return when the dfs returns so it will return back to 7 so at that particular point we'll come out of the for loop for the this adb vertex which will be for 7 which is already because we have visited all the vertex of 7 so next thing that will go into the stack is this this vertex 7 so once we come out from the 7 suppose we came to 7 from 5 so in this case again the for loop will be complete because we have visited all the vertexes of 5 so when we are coming out so i will add 5 here so till now the order that has been maintained in the stack so suppose so first thing that entered my stack was number 10 and then number 7 then number five and uh, then this number which was two and then one then it was two and before basically uh, even before entering two i cannot enter two here because before entering two i need to visit six also which will be part of the stack so it will be six here then when i go back to two then it, it will be two here and uh, in a similar way uh, I'll visit 3, 8, then 4, uh, sorry, 8, 3, 4, 9, 4, and then 1. So that is how the stack will be populated here. Let us see, let's run this code and see whether it has worked or not. And finally, to print it, we are just uh, popping out from the stack and printing it. So if you see the first element that we popped out is one so it will be in reverse order because we are popping from the stack from on from the top so we have seven uh, sorry ten seven five six like how we have mentioned here then two uh, which is this one then eight then three then nine and then four and finally one so what it means is that uh, again the same example where we have this graph of g of u comma v then what it means is that all the u should come before v so that is what we have seen here all the u if one is there so one should come before all the other element because it is there at the very first or it is the starting element four should come before nine three eight so four is coming before nine three eight two actually three eight or two uh, this four three two are on the same level so it can be like uh, in any order but 4 should always come before 9 and it should always come before 10 so that order is maintained here 9 should come before 10 and you can see here 9 is coming before 10 so 9 is here 10 is at the very end so it is coming before that so this is how topological ordering or topological sorting is done and uh, we'll see in the next video how we can solve a problem like uh, scheduling a course or checking whether we can complete the course or not can be done and uh, we'll solve a lead code problem for that so that is it for topological sorting see you in the next video